Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking in on my No Grit Bin, the 2022 version. So, taking off my little makeshift lid here, and let's have a look at these guys and see what they're doing. You can see they've made some really nice castings on the top here, so it appears to be going well. Let's, let's see what they've been doing since the last time we peeked in on them. Now the premise behind this experiment is that um, worms generally need a form of grit, whether it be sand or something like that. And it's not so much that I'm debunking a myth here because I know that, you know, through the text of, you know, many people that worms do have a, a gizzard just like chickens do and that they, you know, crush their food up. But how grit grittish does the grit need to be or will just the hard pieces of the food be enough for them or do they really need it? Another thing that I thought might happen if they didn't have grit was, you know, maybe it would change their breeding because I would use um, eggshell for grit in my bins generally. Uh, would this slow them down? Do they need the calcium for something? I don't know. Last year's grit experiment I used leaves and people thought, well, Perhaps the leaves had dirt on them from being on the ground once upon a time and that, you know, we basically put grit in there unknowingly. So this year I am using just the paper bedding that has no grit added to it. It's just shredded cardboard, junk mail, coconut coir, and the usual um, kelp meal to get the biology going. So I'm just going to have a look through here and see how they're doing kind of paying attention, you know, do I see any cocoons in here and, you know, are they eating their food in a timely manner? And I guess, you know, if I come in here every couple of weeks and, you know, the food is, has been, you know, eaten, then I would consider that a timely manner. So looking here, I'm seeing quite a bit of processed paper here. Now, a lot of times when you feed paper as um, bedding, they will, it, you know, it doesn't turn nice and black like it does when it is uh, from leaves, etc. So it turns into this brown color first. Ooh, nice worm ball. Thank you guys. What good worms. Now I think this was potato. So they're all getting around those, those potatoes. I think I see a potato peel here. So they certainly look like they're eating and uh, one of the ways that they say you can tell if a worm is, is okay as far as its nutrition goes is by its color. And you can see that none of these worms look particularly white or anything. This is a mix of the red wigglers, the blue worms, and the European night crawlers. And so, like this one in particular, very wiggly worm. It's an uh, immature uh, red wiggler. And I'm kind of trying to, since I do have a big ball of worms here, I'm kind of looking to see if there's any cocoons. Because, you know, when a bunch of worms get together, usually there's cocoons. I don't see any right off the top, but uh, maybe you guys are seeing uh, some cocoons from your vantage point. Just looking at things here. Um, our spring has seemed to have sprung. It is now 55 degrees uh, percent humidity in the basement, so now we're going to be having problems with things being a little too damp. Uh, but it is still uh, 64 degrees in the basement today, so might have a little bit of slowness from the worms. Uh, like I mentioned the last time, one of the good things about worm bins, if they're run correctly, is that they don't stink. I'm holding a potato here that is, you know, the consistency of peanut butter, and it doesn't smell bad, and I don't have a cold. It's just they've eaten everything that is ugly, and, um, and there's nothing left to stink, I guess. So there, in theory, there should be about a pound, pound and a half of worms in here. And I'll put the dates below as to when we started the 2022, but, you know, it's only March, so it hasn't been going for that long. So I'm just going to keep kind of milling through this here, looking for any cocoons looking at the, the health of the worms to see if, if we see anything here that we would consider to be, you know, a warning. Looks like we've got a pineapple here. The butt of the pineapple. Keep 
so they're they're able to eat these things. So if they, you know, if the helpers in the bin are, you know, eating it first and then they're eating it second or something. But here's a little baby worm, so we know they're breeding. It's a little hatchling. Still flipping through here. There's the rest of the pineapple. All the worms are twined around it. So what we saw last year with the experiment was that they did continue to breed and they did um, not have a problem eating. So that's what we're checking this year, doing the no grit bin with paper. So flipping all the way through here, it looks like most of the potatoes are gone and they just have a little bit of that pineapple left. So I think it's, it's fine to give them a feeding. We'll put all the old food back together over here. And then, you know, I'll change places over here so we can tell, you know, how fast they're going through the food, the new food. So today they have a special treat. So they're going to get some melon. Go ahead and line that up. And this was super overripe, so I don't think they'll have a problem getting into it. I think the moisture looks good in here. I don't need to do anything with that. The worms do look healthy, although I didn't find any cocoons, but in this new of a bin, maybe there's not that many that it's, it's so obvious. But if I find any in post-production, I will uh, make sure to zoom in so you guys can see too. Um, but actually, most of the time, you guys find them when I do not. So the No Grit Bin does have its own playlist. I will link that below. If you like this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.